Good morning to everyone. It gives immense pleasure for me to stand before this enlightened August gathering and to welcome all the dignified dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. Today is really a red letter day in our life. This is the third graduation ceremony of DMIs in Eugene University, Chipata campus. On behalf of the trust and the management of DMI, I am very pleased to extend my sincere and warm welcome to all the participants who are gathered here under the protection of our Almighty. I am very proud of extending my amiable welcome to Mr. Chanda Gazolo, the Permanent Secretary, Eastern Province, Republic of Zambia, as the guest of honor for this third graduation ceremony. Mr. Chanda Kazolo is an excellent personality with his exemplary leadership qualities. I take this golden opportunity to acknowledge his tremendous help as the Permanent Secretary of Eastern Province to our academic activities. Indeed, we are most fortunate to have such an eminent personality as the guest of honor to our third graduation ceremony. In this time, I extend a genial welcome to our guest of honor. Welcome you, dear sir. I have great pleasure in welcoming Dr. TXA Anand, President of the University Council, who represents very reverend Father Dr. J. E. Arul Raj, the Chancellor of DMI St. Eugene University, a dynamic and effective personality. A versatile scholar, a multifaced personality, a man of high perspective view, entering worker to achieve his vision through his mission. He is acting as a pillar in connection with the development activities of DMI group of institutions in Africa. Welcome, dear sir. I am happy to welcome His Lordship Right Reverend Charge Cosmos Sumaira Lungu, the Bishop of Chipata. We are very much delighted for his presence on this fine occasion. His concern in education and women empowerment in the development of Chipata Diocese is highly remarkable. His Lordship, your love towards youth empowerment and your passion for providing innovative skills to the youth is highly commendable. His Lordship, your love and thirst for providing education to the poor and needy in your diocese needs no introduction. With much joy, we acknowledge your valuable support for our service towards education and the community in and around Chipata. We proudly welcome you, His Lordship. I am honored to welcome His Lordship Right Reverend Dr. Benjamin S. Piri, JCD. Axillary Bishop of Chipata he is the chairperson of the advisory board DMI St. Eugene University Chipata campus. And he is much concerned for the development of higher education and the growth of our university in the eastern province. His physical presence embellished the graduation ceremony, a full pledged one. We proudly welcome you, His Lordship. With immense pleasure, we welcome Reverend Father Denis Putumbuyo Piri, Chancellor of Chipata Diocese and the member of DMI St. Eugene University Chipata Advisory Board. His concern in education and human empowerment in the development of Chipata Diocese is highly remarkable. We are very much pleased to extend our wholehearted welcome to you, Reverend Father. I have immense pleasure in extending a hearty and cordial welcome to Reverend Father J. Michael Anthony Vinod, MMI, the provincial of East African province, who is a source of inspiration to all of us in carrying out our day-to-day -day activities. Welcome you, dear Father. We extend warm welcome to Dr. R. Kavida Registrar for his spectacular service and dedication for our DMI St. Eugene University. Welcome, Madam. It is our bound duty to extend our cordial welcome to the beloved Senate members of the University for their remarkable presence in this jubilant day. Their contribution for the sake of our University is noteworthy. Welcome you, sirs and madams. 
I appreciate welcome to all advisory board members of DMI St. Eugene University Chipata campus. Their enthusiastic fervor for the academic growth of this campus is still greenish and memorable. Our sincere welcome to all members. Our cordial welcome to the district commissioner and the provincial education officer, the regional commander, Zambian Army, the police commissioner, the provincial intelligent officer, the provincial medical officer, the regional commander for Zambia National Service, officers from Zambia Correctional Service, and the town clerk for this colorful event. Welcome you all, sirs and madams. With pleasure and pleasure, we welcome vice principal, HODs, teaching staff members, and the non-teaching staff, and all our students. Welcome father, sirs, madams, and dear students. You are the real heroes and heroines of this day, my dear graduates. Today is an unforgettable day in your life. After getting a job, you should come forward, not only to serve for your family, but also to serve for our nation. Should not be a man of thought, but a man of action. Give all your hands to build a new, strong, and prosperous nation in the near future. Our, our wholehearted welcome to all the graduates. All protocol being observed, and I welcome all the members. Thank you. May I invite Dr. Ara Kavita, Deputy Vice Chancellor, who represents Dr. T.X.A. Anath, the President, University Council, to present the report of DMI Africa and DMI St. Eugene University. Mr. Chanda Kasolo, the Permanent Secretary, Eastern Province. Dr. T.S. A. Anand, President of University Council, who represent very reverend father, Dr. J.E. Arul Raj, the Chancellor of DMI St. Eugene University, His Lordship Right Reverend George Kazomo Lumori Lungu, the Bishop of Chipata, His Lordship Right Reverend Dr. Benjamin S. Piri, SJD, the Axler Bishop of Chipata, the members of the delegation from the ministry, members of Trust of DMI, Senate members, members of the advisory board, my dear graduates, distinguished guests, my dear staff members, dear students, sisters, fathers, and parents. Graduation greetings and good morning to all. I extend my warm welcome from the bottom of my heart to all in the August gathering. It gives me an immense pleasure and happiness to take part in the third graduation ceremony of DMI St. Eugene University Chipata campus. Dear sir, the daughters of Mary Imoglet, DMI was founded by very reverend father Dr. J.E. Arulraj in the year 1984 to render service to the most downtrodden and the poor. DMI has undertaken several charity and development activities doing human service in villages and remote areas. For the past years, DMI focused its dynamic efforts in building non-profit educational institutions that not only supports innumerable poor rural students, but also provides high quality standard of education. DMI proudly serves more than 5,000 women, more than 10,000 students at college level, more than 8,000 students at school level, and more than 35 children under its care. Today, more than 20,000 students benefited globally. Indeed, DMA is a religious organization rendering service to people of all religion and tribes. DMA found many reputed educational institutions in India which include engineering, arts and science, education colleges and schools having international standards. Living in a knowledge era where global boundaries have faded, 
our chancellor landed in Tanzania, East Africa, 2003. DMI Women's World is another settle of DMI, working in the village of Africa, empowering the women, assisting to organize self-help groups, training them in special skills in production, marketing, and administration, and enable them to generate revenue through vocational activities such as handicrafts, tailoring, entrepreneur skills, merchandising, and so on. Now DMI is growing in different spheres. Dear sir, with splendid joy and immeasurable happiness, I wish to inform you that today DMI Saint Eugene University has registered with Higher Education Authority of its two campuses of DMI Saint Eugene University Chipambo campus and DMI Saint Eugene University Chipata campus. After the registration, the programs were submitted to Higher Education Authority for accreditation process. Presently, 1,176 students are pursuing their higher studies at our university, and 73 staff members and 37 supporting staff members are working in the university. Dear sir, we are happy to inform that the university is planning to enter into the field of medical and allied courses. Dear sir, I am very much delighted to inform that this August gathering, this forum is a perspective view and far-sighted vision for the growth and development of nation, especially for Eastern province, where our DMS and Eugene University is situated. Our Chancellor, Reverend Father Dr. J.E. Arul Raj, proudly announced a scholarship for the students called Mother Virgin Scholarship. This scholarship is administered through Catholic Bishop of Chipata. As a result, 25 students have been admitted in our campus after the recommendation of the Office of Bishop, Diocese of Chipata. Apart from this, 50% scholarship in tuition fees is given to the first and second top girl students from the secondary school in Zambia. This attempt is not only to encourage female education, but also to extend our moral support for women empowerment. Further, I would like to say that scholarship of 25% in the tuition fees also given to a deserving boy or girl from grade 12 recommended by the Paris priest through Zambia. Dear sir, I am very proud of saying that the current academic year 2080 for the students from the eastern province who enroll here for higher studies, various types of concessions have been given. 50% concession in tuition fees for a single orphan student, 60% concession in students' fees for single orphan girl student, 75% concession in tuition fees for full orphan students. As a result, 302 students are benefited in two campuses through this scholarship. The total amount of the scholarship is 1,725,500 kocha for this academic year alone. Your Honor, the university is one in the whole of Zambia to offer distance education in the virtual mode of establishment of Institute of Virtual and Distance Learning from the year 2014. The first fast-track teacher education program has received astounding response from the teachers of Zambia. This academic year, 2018, 1,067 candidates have enrolled for the year bachelor degree and master degree. There are 147 staff members working in IVDL, of which 117 are academic staff, three technical staff, and 30, 27 supportive staff. There are 14 well-equipped studios with latest computer and advanced video and audio system, data centers with servers established. All the 10 provincial centers are connected with Samtel fiber optic connectivity along with MPLS connections. DMI Saint Eugene University is functioning in 10 IVDL provincial centers, namely Chipata, Kabwe, Kasama, Kidwe, Livingstone, Lusaka, Mansa, Mungu, Mipika, and Solvesi. 
around 3,122 in service teacher candidates and 78 pre-service candidates are doing their bachelor and master degree through these IVDL centers. Dear sir, we proudly announce that a total number of 103 graduates is going to be become graduates. My dear graduates, our university has not only taught education, but also has inculcated you with skills, knowledge, and wisdom. Here, we are trying to mold you an intelligent students as well as most disciplined student. Now, you can feel proud of that. You are not only pride citizen of Eastern Province, but also pride citizen of Zambia. Our university is much oriented towards science and technology. And so you have to think with scientific reasoning. I emphasize all of you to harmonize knowledge, to promote innovation and entrepreneurship. Our teaching and motivation will definitely make you to rethink and to hinder your interest to learn more and develop multiple skills continuously. Life without ill learning is growth without maturity. You have motivated to develop interpersonal skills and talents to meet the demands of the global markets. The very purpose of education is to enhance the quality of life. Life is not mere enjoy things. Life is not mere by giving importance to sensual pleasures. We should learn to live together. By living together, we can create a good society and civilization. By creating a good civilization, you can secure your place in the sociological arena of the world. In this happiest moment, we have to think about the mindset of your parents, sponsors, and guardians. The dream of your parents about you become a reality today. They will cherish this memory up to their last breath. It is your bond duty to keep them happy up to their last. They are living gods and kneel before them and get the blessings of them. This ceremony is mere graduation ceremony. It is the outcome of untiring hard work and effort. DMA has not only given light to your family, but also it will act as a lighthouse generation together. What you plant now, you will harvest tomorrow. Care for your family, friends, kith and kins, close relatives, society, and finally the nation. According to the proverb, make hay while sun side. So try to use of all available opportunities and make your life a prosperous one. In our life, success is never final and failure is not fatal. As a student, you must have intelligent, honest, dignity, reciprocity, loyalty, fidelity, responsibility, accountability, ability, capacity, capability, hard work, and perseverance. I wish you all success in all ventures and endeavors. Let us all build a better and prosperous Zambia. Dear sir, Finally, I would like to acknowledge your support and encouragement. We receive from your government so far. We accept the same support and encouragement to be extend our government in connection with all efforts to be taken by DMI University in all the provinces of our nation. We assure that the fight of ours will continue for upliftment of downtrodden people of our nation and give our thanks to make our ventures a successful one. Dear gatherings, on behalf of DMIS and Eugene University, I wish to extend thanks from the bottom of my heart for being with irrespective of your tight engagement and precious time. Your presence is precious. Your speech is more precious. Your remark, remark is most precious. Thank you to all. The third graduation ceremony is being live telecast on our website. You can watch the live telecast of this program on our university website. May I invite His Lordship Right Reverend Dr. Benjamin S. Piri, JCD, the Auxiliary Bishop of Chipata, to offer felicitation. The 
guest of honor, Mr. Chandaka Solo, Permanent Secretary for Eastern Province, Dr. Anath, President of the University Council, the Right Reverend George Cosmas Zumairi Lungu, the Bishop of Chipata, or in brief, may I say, all protocols observed. Guest of Honor, on behalf of the University Advisory Board, I would like to express our sincere joy and gratitude at this graduation of 101 students today from our university. Our task as advisory board is to offer guidance to the university management and to the Senate for the smooth running of this university campus. We endeavor to see to it that our university meets the acceptable national and international standards for an institution of this level. We would like to see a university that produces graduates who will meet the needs of the academic field today. We would like to see graduates who will excel in all they do. We are confident that the students graduating today are of a high quality who will add value to the teaching fraternity and the nation as a whole. As a board, we urge Senate to consider adding courses to the curriculum that will help the graduates to be entrepreneurs so that they are able to create employment rather than being job seekers after graduation. We are aware that in Zambia today, we have too many graduates chasing very few jobs, both in the public and the private sector. The government of the Republic of Zambia should create an environment where graduates are able to prosper in their fields of specialization, both within and outside the country. Once again, a hearty congratulations to the graduating students and to the staff and to the university establish establishment as a whole. Be assured of our commitment to the task of guiding this university to higher heights. May God bless you all. I thank you. Once again, the third graduation ceremony is being live telecast in our website. You can watch the live telecast of this program in our university website. May I invite his lordship, Right Reverend George Cosma Zumairi Lungu, the Bishop Chipata, to offer felicitation. Guest of honor, Mr. Chandaka Solo, Permanent Secretary for Eastern Province, Dr. Anath, President of the University Council, representing very Reverend Father Dr. J.E. Raj, the, the Chancellor, His Lordship, Right Reverend Dr. Benjamin Espiri, the Bishop of Chipata, Dr. Alan Lingambe, the provincial education officer is in province, and all protocols observed. A very good morning to you all. From the Philippines, a story is told of a minister of education visiting the countryside to inspect schools and assess the staffing situation. He came to this basic school 
and found a handful of teachers handling hundreds of children. Some were not even trained as teachers, but were simply volunteers. To make matters worse, they were poorly accommodated. Going through the staff register, the minister came across the name of a teacher that caught his attention, a lady who was overqualified. She had a doctorate in mathematics and a doctorate in physics and chemistry. The obvious reaction of the minister was, what are you doing here? You are overqualified and you deserve a senior position at any of our universities in the country. When I get back, I'll ensure that you will leave this place as soon as possible. The minister was shocked to hear her response. She said, I will not move an inch because these, my children, deserve, deserve something better. Our guest of honor. We as a local church invited DMI and MMI to come to Eastern Province and establish this university because we were and we are still convinced that our children deserve something better. Our pupils do not do well in most of our schools, not because they are dull, but because of the shortage of well-trained staff, especially in mathematics and sciences. And that is why we agreed with DMI sisters and MMI fathers and their collaborators to make it their top priority, churning out graduates well-qualified, especially in these areas of study, so that our children compete favorably with students elsewhere in the nation. Our guest of honor, Eastern Province is a rural province and the majority of our people are small scale farmers and for them to raise money enough to send their children to a university poses a very serious challenge, especially when the farming season is bad. To have a university within their reach was going to make a big difference. It is with this in mind that we went into negotiations with the founder father, very reverend father, Dr. Aruraj, or MI, to put in place a scholarship program that is going to support the vulnerable students. And that is why the university came up with five levels of sponsorship program, 100%, 75%, 70%, Sixty percent, fifty percent, and twenty-five percent funding, targeting the most vulnerable students in our community. A good number of the students have benefited from this program. I'm sharing this with you, our guest of honor, and with all of you present here today, just to bring to your awareness that the unsung, the unsung hidden sacrifices that the DMI sisters, MMI fathers, and their collaborators are offering for the sake of our children. It does not mean that they have a lot of money to give away. It is simply the spirit of sacrifice and self-giving. They do this because they are also convinced that our children deserve a better education deal in this country. They deserve a word of deep gratitude and heartfelt thanks for who they are to us in this province. However, I should hasten to say, I regret to reveal that the majority of those students who have benefited from this fund have failed to honor their promise to contribute to that fund. The idea behind this contribution is to ensure its sustainability and its continuity, so that if this provision is scrapped tomorrow, we may still have something to offer 
to the needy students who will always be with us. And so, if this attitude continues, forgetting your past because of your present, the effects will boomerang on their children's children who will suffer want, and no one will be available to come to their aid. Take this as a challenge, all who are beneficiaries of our various kinds of scholarships, that once deployed, once deployed, we expect you also a better deal in fulfilling your promises and service delivery. Our guest of honor, the biggest employer of our graduates is the government. If government would have a similar conviction that our graduates like these before us today deserve something better, we would not have a situation where staff is recruited from other provinces, while our own are perpetually condemned to being street graduates for years no end. If indeed they qualify, let them be given the jobs locally as a matter of priority so that they plow back what has been invested in them. This is a matter of justice for our children and not regionalism. In conclusion, I wish to sincerely thank the Founder Father, Very Reverend Father Dr. Ruraj, DMI, MMI, and their collaborators for accepting to come to Shipata Diocese to offer quality education for our people. I know it is their love of Christ that compelled them to come and be at the service of our people. I also wish to heartily thank our de dedicated hardworking and enterprising management for their wonderful work. And I may be failing in my duty not to acknowledge and thank our benefactors and friends of the university for their support. We appreciate their contribution towards the realization of the dreams of our people and the benefits of, that, of the nation as a whole, who will reap the fruit of their work. To our graduates, hearty congratulations. Hearty congratulations. You had the courage to embark on this tough academic journey. You stuck to it, and today you have accomplished your work. Hearty congratulations. Now mark this. Count on the God of Moses, who journeyed with you from the very beginning till today. Trust in him, for he says, every hair on your head has been counted. He will never allow you to succumb to any oppressive force. With him, victory is certain. May God bless you. May God bless us all. And may God bless our great nation, Zambia. I thank you for listening. May I invite Dr. T.X.A. Anath, the President University Council, who represents the Chancellor of DMI St. Eugene University, Very Reverend Father Dr. J.E. Aruraj, to deliver the graduation address. Good morning, everyone. Mr. Chanda Kasolo, the Permanent Secretary, Eastern Province, and the guest of honor. His Lordship, Right Reverend George Cosmos Lungu, the Bishop of Chipata. His Lordship, Right Reverend Dr. Benjamin Piri, actually Bishop of Chipata. The Acting Vice Chancellor, members of the Trust, members of the Senate, members of the Council, members of the staff, graduates, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Allow me to start by thanking two important people today. It's my duty to remember the Founder Chancellor, Reverend Father Dr. J. Arul Raj, who made this university possible in Chipata, and His Eminence Cardinal Medado Mozambwe, who was an architect of this university. He's the one 
who pushed me to come and see the old craft center. After seeing, when I came here, I was received by Bishop Lungu. We went around. Then founder came. Founder was impressed with the need of the eastern province. Then everything is a history. We started the college over here. Today we have a growing campus in eastern province. I am representing our chancellor, Dr. J.E. Arulraj, who is not able to make it today because he has to travel to Rome on a different assignment. I wish everyone here all the best on behalf of the Chancellor. I am much delighted to extend my warm greetings to every one of you who are present here on the occasion of the third graduation ceremony of Chipata campus. Your Honor, your presence is the predominant in this ceremony made us extremely glad. Always we remember and acknowledge the support from the government, from the President, from the Minister for Higher Education, Minister for General Education, and uh, Provincial Office in Chipata. Your Honor, today we proudly announce that a total of 103 candidates, 48 degree and 55 diploma, is going to be graduated or with diplomats till date in Zambia. 1,600 plus graduates have graduated and we have dedicated them to the nation. Your Honor, I congratulate all the graduates for having the identification of this university. Today, my dear graduates, you made this university proud, you made your parents proud, and I want you to make the nation proud. Your Honor, the university appreciates the staff, parents, guardians of the graduates and sponsors who supported them extended the support for their growth. At this moment, I would like to acknowledge the sincere gratitude to the regulatory bodies, Ministry of Higher Education, Ministry of General Education, the Higher Education Authority, Health Professional Council of Zambia, Teaching Council of Zambia, and various offices, including the Provincial Education Office, District Commissioner Office, and your office, for the wonderful support what we are receiving from your side. Your Honor, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live with them. The university also expresses its gratitude to His Excellency Ed Edgar Chagwa Lungu, President of Republic of Zambia, by moving this nation upward and forward. We are witnessing a lot of development in our country. This is giving us a lot of hope and encouragement for investing more and being part of the development in Zambia. His actions on development gives us a lot of hopes that my students will be finding a good job and many will be having an opportunity to be an entrepreneur. Looking at the development, what is happening in all the parts of the country, the roads, the infrastructure, the investment on that area opens a lot of avenue for students with the right attitude to start a business. We thank His Excellency and we request you to carry our greetings and thanks to him when you meet him today. Kindly convey our gratitude. Your Honor, it is a time to show our heartfelt respect and love to His Lordship, Right Reverend George Cosmos Lungu, Bishop of Chipata for his guidance in all the aspects of the university and its events. We also sincerely ap appreciate his Lordship, Right Reverend Dr. Benjamin Espiri, the Axillary Bishop and the head of the advisory board of this campus. My dear graduates, respect your parents, respect the community and respect the nation. Try to do as much possible to develop this nation. Don't stop learning and go for the higher studies. Please understand the bachelor degree, what you have, will be nothing in next three years' time. Go for the master's, go for the doctorate. After that, continue to study something or other, which will add value to you. Now you are going to be a graduate. Utilize this opportunity. Grow with the university. Make use of the continuing education department 
thereby contribute to the country in its economy. Be an entrepreneur. If you are an entrepreneur, you can succeed in your dreams. You may be a teacher, you may be a business administration graduate or a clerk, but start something. Be an entrepreneur. My dear graduates and my alumni, I have a message to share with you from the Chancellor. Your Honor, the message from the Chancellor to our graduates is, he is setting aside a fund of 1 million kocha for incubation of business and projects by the students. 1 million kocha is set aside by the Chancellor for incubation of the projects and business. If you, my dear students, if you have a good idea, come to us, discuss with us. We will develop the same as your partners. We can even have a shareholding in your business to develop your idea. You can start individually or in collaboration with other students. We are ready to handhold. The key areas of focus are agriculture, mining, trading, ICT, and government projects, implementation of government projects. Your Honor, when I was driving from Fuwe Airport to Chipata yesterday, I saw a lot of, on, on, everywhere on the side, mangoes, mangoes, mangoes. I stopped the car to buy a bucket. What used to cost me maybe uh, around um, 200 kocha in Tanzania were sold here for 10 kocha. I felt bad. I told my colleague, Herman, Dr. Herman, I told him, Herman, why don't you tell your students to start a small pulp making factory? You need a small machine to make a pulp. Make the pulp, can the pulp. There's a big market in Dubai, big market in Saudi Arabia big market in South Africa, big market in many countries. Say so you are blessed. You have mangoes, you have cotton. Why we don't think about doing something? If any student is coming with any project, we are ready to partner with you. You are maybe a qualified teacher in diploma or graduate teacher in diploma, but this can be your side business. And over a period, this will be the main business. So we are ready to partner so for that purpose, our chancellor has set aside a fund for the students. Make use of it. If you are not going to make use of it, then we have to go to give it to some other student from other university. Right? Why? We feel there is a lot we can do, not only in education alone. And government has wonderful schemes or training through the Small Industrial Development Corporation. Please knock the office of the honorable guest here. They'll be able to give you the technology. They'll be able to assist you. So we can handhold you on those areas. Your Honor, the motto of our Chancellor on this occasion is be an employer. Don't look for to be an employee. Be a creator of job than a job seeker. My dear graduates, Remember the past with gratitude and live in the present with enthusiasm. Look forward to the future with confidence. I can tell you, with my limited exposure in Zambia, I am here for the last, uh, right from 2004, today maybe around 14 years. I love Zambia. And the opportunities what you have are tremendous. And I used to tell the bishop and the late uh, cardinal, you have wonderful English. We have to make use of the language. So, Your Honor, today, when we came here, we did a study, what is going to be our focus education. We found there is a lot of gap in science education. This gap in science education is forcing people from other countries to come and work here in engineering, in ICT, and other discipline. So we are planning to bridge this gap. In other countries, we have College of Engineering, College of Medicine, but here we have only ICT, management, and education. So what we are doing is, if God will link, from next January, we are going to start a science school in Lusaka. That school is going to churn out only science graduates. When I came in 2004, I went to many schools to study and do a market survey. 
a girl will say what do you want to be in future i want to be a radio announcer or i want to be a nurse or i want to do fashion design no one was interested to be a engineer or a doctor or those kind of things men i want to be an accountant or i want to be an advocate i say right but it is the engineers who are the creators it is the doctor who are the person who can do a lot so we are planning to invest on science education at the school level if god willing we'll be starting the same thing in the next academic year from lusaka which will spread over many uh, provinces in the days to come i thank you very much for being here your presence matters a lot to us we are grateful and i thank you on behalf of the chancellor we are here to build the nation with you kindly carry our sincere gratitude on behalf of the chancellor on behalf of the students to his excellency the president your honor i dedicate 103 disciplined graduates to you i underline the word disciplined not the knowledge alone these students have knowledge they have skill they also have very good discipline so when you are looking for employment give them the first preference you will be able to get a loyal team which will be joining you and working along with you to fulfill the dream thank you very much i wish you all the best i thank the parents i thank everyone here thank you very much May I invite Dr. T X A Anath, the President, University Council, who represents the Chancellor of DMI Saint Eugene University, Very Reverend Father Dr. J E Aruraj, to request the guest of honor, Mr. Chanda Kasolo, Permanent Secretary, Eastern Province, Republic of Zambia, to address the graduates. May I invite the guest of honor, Mr. Chanda Kasolo, to give his keynote address. he is here today despite being uh, with a very tight schedule the president is coming but he is here just to show how important you are we thank you very much for being here and kindly give your address the chancellor of DMI St Eugene University the very reverend father dr j e arul raj his lordship the right reverend george cosmos zumaire lungu the bishop of chipata his lordship dr benjamin s piri the auxiliary bishop of chipata the president of the university council dr t x a anand the director dr igentius a herman members of the university council dear graduates friends from the press distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen this morning i was speaking to his excellency the president of the republic of zambia mr edgar chagolungu and i explained to him that i was honored to be the guest of honor at this ceremony i bring greetings from his excellency the president not only that he wished to send his congratulations to the graduates and wish them a great future in our mother zambia <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen It is my honor and privilege to be part of this important occasion of the third graduation of DMI St Eugene University Chipata campus. I really appreciate DMI and MMI's tremendous dedication not only to the field of religious propaganda but also to the field of education. And may I qualify that by saying to a field of quality education i equally appreciate dmi and mmi's concern for the marginalized sections of our society 
this appreciation cannot go without thanking and acknowledging the founder, father, and chancellor of DMI and MMI, the very Reverend Father Dr. J. E. Aru Raj, for his zest and affection to transform the youth of Zambia as worthy persons of this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is common knowledge that education alone cannot be complete by itself. It can only be complete with higher or tertiary education. For this reason, I once more appreciate the team spirit of these two institutions in establishing educational institutions, not only in Zambia, but also other countries, such as Tanzania, South Sudan, Malawi, Ethiopia, Central African Republic, and Brazil. For this, I congratulate you, the Chancellor. Moreover, I've been informed that you have also established the Institute of Virtual and Distance Learning, IVDL. This is an initiative worth appreciating, as it will help those who are unavailable or, un or unable to manage full-time education uh, at the university. Higher or tertiary education plays a vital role in each and every nation, especially with regards to all spheres of political, social, and economic development. This level of education promotes human value as it creates thirst for knowledge and critical thinking. It inculcates human values such as peace, tolerance, nonviolence, and social welfare. Ladies and gentlemen, the government of the Republic of Zambia is resolute in reducing gender disparities in all spheres of Zambian society, including Asian. To this effect, government has come up with a lot of initiatives to bring more girls into the streams of education. These include the Girls Education and Women Empowerment and Livelihood, uh, GWEL, and Keeping Girls in School, KGS, programs. Therefore, DMI and MMI's establishment of various campuses in various parts of our country will complement government in these efforts. I also note that just by looking at the graduates, there is a fair amount of ladies that are graduating today. That pleases me. I hope our numbers will move to parity where at least 50% of graduates in the future will be females. Ladies and gentlemen, the importance of information and communication technology, ICT, in today's modern world cannot be overemphasized. It is a major catalyst in globalization and liberalization in our world. Therefore, ICT plays a major role in higher education. I am reliably informed that all the students of the DMI St. Eugene University, Chipata campus, have free 4G network connection. I am equally informed that DMI St. Eugene University, Chipata campus, has an online library which all the students can access from eight hours in the morning through to 20 hours in the evening every day. That is very commendable. Furthermore, I hear the university has five computers which students are able to use to access 2,000 ebooks and also to check up the percentage of uh, plagiarism with regard to their assignments. Plagiarism is a crime. And we must all know that when you're presenting something as your own, it has to be your own. Otherwise, you're stealing. And according to my knowledge of Catholicism, or Christianity, stealing is one of those things that make you break one of the Ten Commandments. Therefore, we should not
tolerate that at all. Ladies and gentlemen, I am privy to the fact that your new campus facilities in Lusaka have the modern state-of-the-art infrastructure facilities. I pass, when I'm passing by, I look up and I think, one day I'll stop and go and have a look in that wonderful facility. And the facilities there include vast land with concrete pavings, well-equipped laboratories, very spacious classrooms, spacious car parks, two wheelers, stands, and big playgrounds for all the games, including my favorite game of football. I would like to request you to replicate this to your Chipata campus so that Chipata campus students can enjoy the same atmosphere like their colleagues in Lusaka. I know it costs money, but with the determination that your two institutions have, I'm sure it can be done. And especially with the backup of, with, uh, of such uh, dynamic bishops as uh, uh, the Lord the Bishops Lungu and Piri, things should be made a bit easier. But also I can tell you that as provincial administration, we will back you up to the hills. May I say that DMI St. Eugene University's recent academic ties with different types of educational institutions will enhance its scope of coverage and also increase its enrollment rates across the country in general and Eastern Province in particular. And I will not hesitate as the uh, CEO of the province to recommend your university to all manners of people that come to our offices. Because I do believe in what you do. I do believe in the quality of education you give to our pupils and students. I would like to thank DMI St. Eugene University for introducing the Mother Virgin Scholarship with 100% tuition fees exemption through the Catholic Bishop of Chipata. I told you, is a dynamic man. I've been informed that this scholarship will be applicable to 25 students for various programs for the future every year. I'm equally aware that DMI offers 50% scholarships to two girls with the best results in each school, and this is really commendable. I would also like to thank the university for giving fee concessions to single orphan students, both male and female, as well as double orphan students, both male and female. I also am aware on several occasions when some of the students have come to my office to say they can't afford to pay uh, their fees and uh, they're not going to be allowed to see their exams. I have pleaded with the universities and they have allowed, they have allowed the students to, to see their exams. That is very commendable. The special appreciation also goes to Chancellor for the university for giving special attention and encouragement to female education. This will pave way for the emancipation of women in our society. One thing that strikes me is the fact that the number of female students in DMI St. Eugene University's educational institutions outweighs that of male students. This is not the case in other universities. And it's very encouraging as it is taking the quest for girl child education to another level. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not easy for one to obtain a diploma or a degree due to various challenges. However, in the midst of all these challenges, you graduating today have made it simply through difficult circumstances and you, your personal hard work. May I point out that though you achieved this, you should not forget the sacrifice, dedication, involvement, and immeasurable affinity 
for education by your parents. I'd like you to give a clap to your parents for their dedication and help. <laughs> Graduates, now the windows of opportunities are yawning and inviting you. I urge you to choose your path to success carefully. Be rest assured that the world has a plethora of bright prospects for you. However, the ball is in your hands. You must have a concrete plan for your future. You must develop proper and clear vision about who you want to be after this graduation. I appreciate that while you're studying, you probably don't think much about your future. But now is the time. It is critical you get as much advice as you can about your future. In doing so, I urge you uh, to do the following um, by listening to the Proverbs. One of them is, there is no substitute for hard work. And I'm sure you've heard this one too. No pain, no gain. It doesn't mean you physically bleed and feel that pain. The pain comes largely psychologically. When you see some of your friends doing very well, and perhaps that friend of yours got a credit at the uh, degree level or diploma level, and you got a distinction, but you haven't got that job. That is the pain I'm talking about. You go to walk the streets, you go to knock on doors. you got to find out where you can get a job. That doesn't come easy. But keep, keep on trying. You don't win by giving up. I would like to implore you graduating. And I'm one of those that are fortunate with God's help. I'm here. I've achieved something that a lot of people haven't achieved. My father was uh, highest achievement in government, was a deputy equivalent to deputy PS. So I've beaten that. But I expect that my sons must beat my uh, achievement too, especially if they can go and become entrepreneurs. And I'm encouraging most of you there. Think of ideas. Think of what else you can do other than just a job. I can assure you, nobody got rich because they have a job. But people get rich because they use their own initiative. They move mountains. They do the impossible. And they become very, very rich indeed. Just last week, I was looking at uh, a list that was given to me of the richest 10 people in Zambia. And amongst them, I realized perhaps 50%, 55%, maybe 60% didn't even have a degree. But they have millions, they're worth millions of kwacha. One of those is Jeffrey Mwamba, so-called GBM. And what we learn from people like him is just dedication and suffering a lot in the beginning. But doing everything, a lot of um, suffering amongst the business community and so on. Why are people coming here to take business opportunities? I will sacrifice my uh, profession and argue that. The reason is we've got most things right here. The infrastructure, which was being talked to by the last speaker, is second to none amongst African countries. We are almost catching up with South Africa in infrastructure development. And infrastructure includes hospitals. It includes schools, universities. When we do that, it is for you, the young ones. You now go to education. Apply that to do business. As I conclude, allow me to re-echo my wholehearted appreciation to the Chancellor of DMA, and MMI for the tremendous services 
your educational institutions, our offering in the area of education, religion, and other social services through your supervision and guidance. I also assure your Chancellor, I assure you, Chancellor, that on behalf of the government of the Republic of Zambia, I will extend all my support, cooperation, counseling, etc., to ensure that all educational institutions, especially yours, flourish. I would like to thank the Catholic Church, especially here in Chipata, for their moral guidance and support to our government. Most of your criticism is very valid because you think things out and you offer solutions. You don't criticize for the sake of criticism. We thank you for that as government. I also thank the Catholic Church for having provided the help to Chipata to become a city. One of the requirements to become a city, you must have a cathedral. And St. Anne's Cathedral was what we used to become a city. I also thank the Catholic Church for providing high-class education through various schools, colleges, and universities. I suppose they say once a Catholic, always a Catholic. And uh, I am one. Just a 